Hello, this is Trinot, and this is Gadurian's Blitzkrieg in Case Blue, and upon request of some people that uh, I talked to, I did the horrible, horrible thing of drawing anime faces on the Sea of Azov. Uh, they wanted me to draw on the plexiglass, and I had to oblige. Anyways, I'm going to go through the supply phase now. Uh, after movement's done and uh, barrage, aircraft barrages, uh, a player checks their supply lines. Now this is different from feeding the troops ammo and fuel. This is like sending people their food and stuff. Um, and this is trying to get supply that traces off the map entirely. So, kind of like long distance feeding and supplying. I mean, it makes sense. So, the way that works is, without any extra stuff, a unit has to be within five truck movement points away from a supply source. Now, that's not five hexes, that's five movement points. Uh, trucks, caught, it costs more movement points for trucks to move through things like woods, and less movement points to move through things like roads. So... Basically, I'm going to go through the units and see if any of them are out of supply. There's also the bonus of um, headquarters can extend this distance by a certain amount of movement points based on their stats. Uh, headquarters right here with this little supply token on it. So this headquarter, the left number determines how far it can extend its, uh, the supply range. So it can throw supply t to the front or to other units. So if it's in supply, it can further supply other units. The tile spacer is indicating that it has uh, on map supply depots there, which are different. Though if a unit is out of trace supply, they can eat off the map, meaning they consume um, those supply point tokens, which as a reminder, looks something like this and, the, and uh, are divided into quarter denominations of tokens sometimes. So let's start on the south end of the map. Uh, the game lists what map points are supply sources. Hex 13234 right here is a supply source. Naturally the things there are in supply. This is definitely within one movement point away, it's in supply. That, um, while hex counting is one, two, three, four, five, in addition, the road is half of movement points, so it's more like one, two, and a half away. Same for these, they're fine. Um, let's look at this guy. He is one, two, three, four, that's interesting. How is he that far away from supply resource? Hmm, unless there's a headquarter here that can throw supplies. Did I screw up? I don't think I did. Oh boy. I might have to feed off map if I'm not careful. Let me get out the pencil here. One, two, three, four, five. Unless the headquarter I moved up here, or rather right here, there's a headquarters I moved somewhere. What's the extent of this thing? Six. So no, it couldn't have fed these troops. There was something that made me realize that this was connected, and I forget what. Sorry for the camera, but... One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Oh, right, 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 right. So the reason this is in trace supply is if I count distance over here, we go one, two, three, four. Five. 
Next, uh, there's also a rule that if a unit's adjacent to the end of the uh, supply path, it can get supply too, meaning this reserve can get it, but also this wagon extender. So yeah, this unit can get supply, and more importantly, at this town is a wagon extender. And it can extend um, the distance of supply trace by its movement point listed. In this case, 10 leg points. Important. So sometimes supply distances trace through other movement allowance value types. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this guy's in trace supply using this extender that goes back here, which goes, which is good. So in this unit can throw supply to these guys just fine. By um, these guys are also thrown supply probably from this if they're not in supply already. The extenders can daisy chain, so if an extender reaches another extender, that can lead to a headquarter being supplied by trace supply. It can't use it for throwing um, on map uh, supply depots and fueling manually and ammo and all of that. So there is a truck extend a uh, leg a wagon extender here. 10 extension. So one, two, three, four, five. Wait, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus one for anything next to it. And lo and behold, another extender. Come on, game, please. Come on, camera, please zoom in. There we go. So then. Um, with the glare in mind, that extender can extend to the headquarters here, here, and up here, and all of them can fuel uh, death easily any of the green units and any of the fueled gray, that yellow, and that other green. So they're all being fueled just fine. Over here, um, now a supply source can trace off map, but it can, um, basically they have to reach a railroad, and that railroad has to be on a hex with a town, or sorry, a village, or at, le at least a village, could be a city or a major city, and, or um, a headquarters in combat mode, meaning it doesn't have a move value side up. It has zero move and is sitting there, allowing trains to build up. In addition, the rail has to be usable by the side, uh, the Germans do not own these railroads, so they have to do what's called a rail gauge. Uh, down here, you can see a railhead. That, that's the extent of the German railroad. So units will have to manually trace with those five truck points back to this before they can uh, zoom off the map. And I knock things around. That's great. Thankfully, um, there's a road here. And if we count this, it goes one, two, three, four, five, and those are supplied by that. Not only that, but there's a railhead here, I think. No, there's a railhead all the way up here. Yep, in this town, which also has a headquarters, so it's doubly train uh, available as a trainable, intrainable hex, detrainable, meaning trains can load and unload off it. So this supply point supplies basically all these. I don't really need to bother. The only thing of note is that enemies in combat mode can exert a zone of control and stop truck movement, including supply trace movement. So the this is negated, however, if a unit is in the hex the truck would go through. So this would stop, have to stop right here because there's two enemies next to it. But because this uh, Italian unit is here, the truck can go, oh, I'm safe, and reach these guys just fine. Um, so everything's in supply here. I really don't need to bother counting there. Um, the headquarters alone have like a, can throw 10 distance, and that's, that's easy to count. Um, this guy needs to be within 
Oh, let's see. Yeah, this guy right here first. I think he's on a railhead. That's a supply point. And under it is indeed a railhead. So that's a detrainable hex. And he had a fuel marker on him because he was man manually fueling certain trucks around him. So that's done. And you can throw 10 distance away and that can reach those guys. This person can just trace off uh, through this railhead here in this town, like a wee. Same with that, same with that. Probably the same with that. If not, this guy could do it. Um, I believe, so this railhead means that these guys have to use, um, these guys have to be extended through this uh, guy and they're fine. Um, hmm, that's actually a point. So, although I think this detrainable hex here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, this headquarters counts as being able to throw because it can manually reach the detrainable hex, and then it can further throw things forward. So that should all be fine. Same with one, two, three, four, and that guy can throw H throw stuff all the way over here. So let's just look at the farthest distance somebody has to go and if it can reach then everybody else can reach. So one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah it can reach all of those just fine. Sorry I thought I saw something that should not have been seen. But we're good. Um, should be noted even though I said this, even though this says no fuel, that fuel does not is not bothered with trace supply. That's for um, like actual gasoline and stuff. It has to be on map supply. Over here again, that railhead is on a detrainable hex, so the so these guys are fine. Over here, that's the detrainable hex, and that guy can throw ten away. That's easily within ten right there. Same with that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they're fine. This guy can reach all the way up there. Uh, open fields is one movement point for a truck. And then this is a railhead. You can see the railhead right there. It's a different color, but it's fine. And that can definitely reach, I think, there's a headquarters down here. Yep, that guy can definitely throw 10 truck movement points away. And considering so yeah, that can reach just fine, and that can reach over there, I think. I want to say a railhead is over here, too. Mm, nope, that's an airbase. That's a railhead. Where does this go? I think it goes all the way up here. Oh no, the railhead's right all the way up here. Right? E no? Oh, it's right here under this headquarters. So this thing goes all the way up here. There's probably a... Yeah, so this is all good. This essentially is fine. This is all detrainable hexes, meaning this is all good. Don't even need to bother. Uh, the only question is, is this in supply? And this guy can throw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven away. So yeah, that's totally fine. Even as far pushing as that was. Uh, there's a railhead there, so that headquarters is within range. And then that headquarters can throw to all of these guys, I think. The only question is one, two, three, four, five, six. And that would cost three movement points to move in, and that can feed that guy. Seven, eight. Hmm. But this guy can feed these guys. This guy can feed these guys um, because this is a detrainable hex, I think. Is it? Hmm. Where's the railhead here? Surely it's forward. Hmm. Ah, it's right there. Okay, this is more than fine. These guys can fuel all of that. 
Um, you may think that this is too far reaching, but no, these guys can trace to here, at least this thing can. If not, this guy can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That can fuel that, but more so, one, two, three, four, five. This guy can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or something like that. It's fine. Yeah, they're more than fine. Or just far enough to be supplied, rather. Um, I think that's the detrainable hex right there. Is that a railroad unit? Yeah, that's where the railhead is. So these are these are all in range. Don't need to bother counting that. These are all in range. That 10 HQ right there can throw 10 away and look at all of those people that are in range for that. Um, and nobody has zone of control to stop that that isn't protected by uh, friendly units. This, that's a detrainable hex even without a headquarters on it, so these guys are fine. That guy, I think there's a railhead right there. So these guys can reach that town probably. Let's look at the range here. That is not a detrainable hex because there's no town there. It counts as a ra usable railroad. But there's a headquarters right here and you can fuel those guys. That's way far behind safe lines. Actually, that is not a uh, in supply technically, but there's no troops here, so it's fine. Um, air aircraft do not have to be supplied, and neither do supply dumps. Um, the detrainable hexes reach all the way up here. I can see the little railhead symbol there. So this guy can definitely fuel everything up here. Um, if not that thing. And that's the whole map. So checking for supply, all the axis is good. So that's kind of what the supply step looks like. I, I um, was keeping track of if everything was in supply during the turn and there's not really much that the other player can do to stop it. So there wasn't really any doubt per se, unless I made a calculation error. So that's the supply phase. Uh, next up is the enemy's reaction phase, and I'll get to that next time. Hello, this is Trinant, and this is just a quick summary of the uh, reaction phase. So, the enemy player on a given player turn, the opposing player, uh, can do a thing with their reserve markers to release those reserves to react to the opponent before combat happens. Um, released reserves in this way get half their movement um, to try to you know, put some, uh, put some sticks into the enemy's wheels, uh, figuratively speaking. So let's talk about what reserves got released. So over here, um, basically, there was a reserve unit under this headquarters, and it's uh, it was like a infantry, no, it was a cavalry person, and they rushed over here. Um, this reserve marker has nothing on it, it's just indicating where I released reserves to. Over here, I released a um, tank to run over here. Way up here I had reserve that's moving uh, this NKVD, and they're going to slowly move to this town. I did that, I don't know, just because I feel like this threat's getting threatened soon. Um, over here, not much. Oh, over here though, well yeah, I already said that one. A lot of reserves over here, three of them. I just reconfigured this place to, uh, come on glare to make the river more defensible, though nobody's really here this turn. The, so that was really pointless for me to set all those reserve markers there, but that's okay. And over here, there was a unit in this town. I moved him over to defend this hedgehog. I'm, I might actually put him under that. We'll do that in a second. But yeah, this reserve unit released and is going to hide under that hedgehog uh, to battle this guy. 
And then there was a reserve unit here that I decided not to move, uh, but I released it anyways because reserve units have half their attack rating when they're attacked. And I just figured, and I'm going to get all these reserve markers back next turn, or as soon as I, as soon as the Russian player goes. So there's no point in keeping it on. That's really all the reserve markers. So um, the reaction phase was super quick, especially compared to the gargantuan movement phase that took uh, several days uh, with a few hours in every day. I was playing pretty casually, but still, the movement phase took forever. All right, well, that is the reaction phase of the Soviets against the Axis. So, you know, war games, senpai, and baka dice.